Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to talk about tiles today, which are little pieces of images that you can use to make your backgrounds look a little bit prettier. Now, if I was an object in the game, okay, my tiles can be either in front of me using depth, or they can be behind me, but either way, it makes your room a little bit prettier. So this is a room I made using tiles, but we'll look into that in a little bit. First, let's go to Photoshop. And I want to show you what you probably will see when you get a tile set, uh, such as this one from the Spriter's Resource. Um, this is the Legend of Zelda game. And make sure you always credit the people at the bottom if you use it in your game uh, by putting it in your game information. Anyway, so if we zoom in here really close to this water, and I get this selection tool, I just want to show you that it is 16 pixels across by 16 pixels tall. Well, I want mine to be 32, but we'll get to that inside GameMaker. But you'll notice there's one pixel separating each one of these tiles, and each tile is exactly 16 by 16. Okay, so let's go back into GameMaker, and I'm going to delete the background that I practiced with earlier, and so you can see it from the beginning. So first thing you do is create background. I'm going to call, I'm not going to rename it, let's go. Uh, I'm going to say load background, and here's the sprite sheet I downloaded from the interwebs on Spriter's resource. And you want to check mark this little use as tile set. That tells it that we're going to be breaking it up into lots of little chunks and uh, using it to place into a room. Uh, first thing I want to do is double the size because it's uh, the blocks are 16 by 16 right now. Um, so I'm going to say edit this, and then under transform I want to stretch it a little bit larger. And I just want to double the size exactly, so I'm going to change the percent to 200%, and it changes the values for me. And now it's double the size it was. Perfect. That's all I'm doing with it. Checkbox that. Now, I know that each tile is 32 by 32. Well, if it was designed by somebody that knows what they're doing, it's usually in multiples of 4, um, usually 16 or 32 or 8. Um, so we know it's 32 by 32. Now, remember from Photoshop, we know each block was separated by one pixel. So you would think, well, the horizontal separation would be 1. Well, remember we also doubled the size of it, so now the separation between each one is actually 2. Now it's thinking the very top left is the beginning of a tile. Well, we need to account for the very left edge, uh, so we're going to offset it two pixels in and two pixels from the top to perfectly set it. Now it's perfectly got each tile divided up into 32 by 32 block segments. Had I left it at 16 by 16, these would all be ones because we saw in Photoshop they're all uh, separated by one. So that's all we need to do. It's, it looks like it's uh, divided up nice. Hit OK. And now when we go into our room and we go to Tiles, I am going to close this little compiler window and maximize this so you can see a little better. Stretch these things out a little bit. Oops. OK, that looks good. Um, and let's say I wanted to build my lake here. Um, we could just start building it and holding the shift key just like we do when we place in objects, except imagine these are just kind of images that aren't going to interact with anything. So there's the center of my lake, and then I need to put my, oops, my corners on here. Okay, that was weird. Put that corner on. Corner, oops. I hope I got the size right. I think I did. Why is it not deleting that line? Well, I have to hold like shift sometimes and throw it around in there. Alright, let's get that part put in. And the bottom of the lake, and the sides, and the right side. Good. And then this blank one up here is kind of the uh, area that would surround the lake, all the blank area that 
link can run around in. Looks good. And let's say I want to have some other objects. I can just kind of throw some in there so that link can't run out of the room. Now, of course, these don't actually interact with link. They just uh, are visuals. We're going to make a dummy block object that link will actually run into. Um, that looks good. And we'll fill in these. Now, a little bit about depth. After we get this filled in, of course. Of course, I just screwed that up. There we go. A little control Z will fix that. Okay, so there's my nice lake in the room, and he can get in over here. Um, the depth is kind of like an ocean. So if we go back into Photoshop, I have this little blank. Uh, notepad here. Um, so imagine a side view of the ocean. Let's switch colors to blue. And imagine the ocean we say is zero. Then way down here at the bottom of the ocean might be a really high depth. right? So let's say this is like a thousand Okay, that's really deep. So if you place an object at a thousand depth, it's really close to the bottom. Okay, but if you set it at negative one thousand, that means it's going to be way up here. So if we place this triangle here and a square down here, the triangle is going to be way above. So imagine the viewers viewing from the top looking down at all this depth of stuff. If you play something at negative a thousand, it's going to be way above sea level. But if you play it at, place it at one thousand, it's going to be way down at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, one thousand is very deep. So, to prove that, currently the default layer depth here is one million. Uh, which is way at the bottom of the ocean. So these things are really far down in the depth. And if I set something to negative one, it's going to be right above sea level, right? So let's just place uh, this little eyeballs here at negative one, right above sea level. Um, so when our objects come into the room, like my little Octorok guy here, if you open up that object, you can see his depth right here is zero. Okay, so he is right here, and we have one object, our little eyeballs, which are right above him in depth, and then the rest of the um, tiles that are way down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and place one of the Octoroks in the room. So we go back to the room, go to Objects, and let's throw one of these guys in here, which I've already coded to be able to actually run around. So let's test the game. And now remember, the tiles won't actually interact with our Octorok, but I just want to show you a yeah, school bell. I just want to show you how the depth matters. So you can see he is on top of all of these objects, but he shows up underneath that object because as we looked in Photoshop, we saw the depth. Now to keep our little Octorok from actually running uh, into these objects, or these tiles, I'm sorry, we would place a little dummy wall object in there. So let's make one of those. Let's create an object. We'll just call this uh, object block. And we're going to make a new solid sprite, 32 by 32, because that's the size I'm using for this game and I'm just gonna fill it in I'm just gonna make it, a, it doesn't matter what color it is but just for my own prettiness we're gonna make it that color with a border and let's call it SPR block for the sprite and he is solid and then we just have to say when uh, Octo collision with block uh, we'll just tell it to stop moving with move fixed. There's lots of ways we could do that but let's start out with that. So now in our room our objects with the block 
I'm actually going to set the block to be a lower depth uh, than our octo. So let's set this at like 10, which means he'll be underneath that. Oops. And let's. Why is my object? Let's just fill in a few of those and test our room and make sure that's actually working. Compiling. There. Yeah. So he can't run into that. Now, clearly we don't want to see those blocks. We want him to just not be able to run into the water. So all we got to do is make our block invisible by unchecking visible under object block. So now when we build the room, yeah, we'll see it. Um, but when we play the game, we don't see it. He just can't run into the water. Except for, of course, where I didn't place the block. <laughs> um, you can run in there. So there you go. There's an intro to tiles and tile sets and separating them. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, good luck with your tiles.